Hello everyone, I think we are live. My microphone is not where it's supposed to be. There we go. We'll wait and make sure we've got audio going. So just so you're probably gonna see me make a lot of faces tonight. I burned my thumb like less than an hour ago on a flat iron because I'm a genius because my brain said, hey, I'm dropping this really hot device. I should catch it as it's falling. <laughs> I don't know why our brains tell us to do stuff like that, but that's what happened. And it like, it's the, it's a minor burn. It's no big deal. And it's in the stupidest location. And if I bend my thumb, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Like it's weird how bad it is. So anyway, it's all bandaged up, which you, I wouldn't normally put a bandaid on a burn, but I have to keep my thumb from bending. So I don't like, God, this is so dramatic for a thumb burn on a hair, flat iron. Anyway, that's gonna be fun tonight because I can't bend that thumb, so I don't know how I'm gonna hold the brick. Well, we're gonna get creative. So tonight we're going to be painting Zombie Snail, and this is going to be done in ink tents. And it is available, if you're in the US and you wanna bid on it, that is available to bid on, but be aware, it's ink tents. So not all of the colors are light fast. Some of them are, some of them aren't. It, if you're just hanging it like as a Halloween decoration every year and then putting it in storage, don't put it in a hot garage because I don't trust any art materials in a hot garage long term. But if you're doing that, I would still put it behind like a UV protecting glass to keep the color as rich and vibrant as long as possible. But you've been warned if you decide that you want to buy, buy that. Now I will say any of the ink tints I've done and had hanging behind UV glass, I never had a problem with it fading. And it could have been that I just chose UV or the, the light fast colors. I don't know on that case. I did put aloe, uh, fly me to the moon. I actually did. I went and stole some from a plant that I have outside. So yeah, and if I just hold it straight and especially if there's no bandaid on, no pain. But as soon as I start bending it at all in my mouse, oh God, that's the worst because it's trackball anyway. Moving on. So um, tonight I'm working on 140 pound watercolor paper and it is taped down with an acid-free pH neutral tape. If you do not have an acid-free tape, what I would recommend doing is cutting it after you, oh, this, this camera has been going out all night and I don't know why. Let me see if I can reactivate it. I have reset it so many times. So this is uh, probably gonna be a thing. Let me turn my volume on. Nick, if you, maybe text me. If it goes out again or freezes up, I think I'm more likely get to get that than Discord. Um, Cause that's, yeah, fun. Let me reset that again. Um, but anyway, what you want, oh, I guess I can finish this and I'll change, come on. Here we go. We've got movement. We're back. Okay, so acid-free pH neutral tape, and this is taped, you just can't see. See that, there you go. Now you can kind of see the zombie snail drawn out with a graphite pencil. Um, it is taped with that acid-free tape because if you use like a, a blue painter's tape, regular masking tape, that leaves residue that is not pH neutral, is not acid-free, no matter what medium you're working on, that could cause yellowing of the paper and degradation of that over time, over the years. So if you're not using an acid-free tape like this, just cut off wherever the tape was. Like cut your paper so it's a little bit larger than what you want that end result to be, and I would just cut off anywhere where the tape was and you're safe. Okay. And we've already got, hold on, it's hard for me to move my mouse, so I've got to do it. There we go. Kirsten says, hugs to happy puppers. Uh, oh, I can't see anything. Hold on. This is going to be a challenge. Everything's going to be so slow tonight because of my hands. Uh, would you boys like a super chat from, from Kirsten? Do you want a super chat? Yeah? Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Kirsten. Oh, this looks tasty, huh? Oh gosh, even breaking the treats in half is difficult. God, I'm gonna be whiny all night because of a freaking flat iron. One for you. No, you, you make eye contact. Wade, there you go. That's good, Cal. Yeah, gotta look first. Okay, go lay down. Thank you so much. Lay down, boys. And while I have the screen open, I wanna show you a couple of, of examples. What we're doing tonight is a cartoony, you know, just a fun project, but Ink tense is a very, why are you whining? Lay down, lay down so I can finish my thought all the way. Gibson, he's like, no, I don't think I will. Anyway, um, it, the, with ink tense, it is very, very versatile. You, a lot, most of what I see online with Derwent, what they share is like, the more on textile stuff, like painting shoes, painting fabric and stuff, which it can certainly do. I like to use it for other purposes, which I'm going to show you. Although Derwent, funny story, they actually, Derwent, I think India, Derwent India official, they shared, they tagged me in somebody else's work and said it was mine. 
No, it's not mine. That is not good try. I don't know who they have working at Derwent lately, but I have questions. Um, anyway, moving on. So just to show you a couple of examples, like this was done with ink tents. I've got the tutorial. This is for you over on Patreon. The full tutorial is there or the shorter version is here on YouTube. But you can get something that looks very, very realistic, much more so than what I'm going to do tonight. Um, we've got, here's another one. Like it, seriously, this medium is so fun to work in. And so even though it's not life ass and I don't sell my work unless it's somebody like with you guys where I'm saying, hey, not light fast, just so you know if you buy this. But like I wouldn't just put it on my website because I don't want to risk somebody who doesn't understand that concept buying it. Um, a very fast to get really awesome results. Um, and then of course the tin that I did, if you buy the Derwent Ink Tense tins, this is the one for the pencil and then the one for the turtle is the, the sea turtle. But the point is, it gives you, you can get some amazing, amazing results depending, any style you wanna go with. This medium is very versatile. Okay, so let's go on. And this isn't like a sponsored video or anything. It's just, I did do the tin for them several years ago and I love them. But anyway, okay, let's get on to our actual project. So this one, I'm gonna do a little bit different than usual because I want this purple and teal splatter look in the background. But I don't want to lose my pencil lines, which you can't see yet. You'll see in, in just a moment. I may have to adjust the contrast as we get going. But what I'm going to do is first make an outline of black, which uh, now it would be easier to think I'm just going to take the black pencil and I'll go around the edge. The problem is when I start painting, that black is going to smudge all over the place. So here's a couple of tips about Derwent, or uh, not Derwent, ink tents, because that is Derwent. But with Derwent ink tents, it is permanent when dry, however, de it depends on how you applied it. If it wasn't completely dissolved, so if I put the pencil, I am never gonna get that completely dissolved when I add water. So every time I add, add water, I'm gonna keep reactivating the bits of it that are like kind of chunky and stuck to the paper. So what I wanna do is use my, these ones are the blocks, and I'm gonna paint it on like you would with like a, a pan water, pan, is that the right word? Watercolor, I think that's the word I'm looking for. Um, so I want to use either, I could go with a dark purple or a black, either is fine by me. And I don't even know where any of these colors are. So I'm gonna have to test a couple of them. Um, let's actually just pull this over here. This one looks like a dark, dark purple. I don't even know. I'm gonna have to go get a new blackout maybe. Let's try a few colors. Now these, the palette is really, challenging to find the color you want because you get into these dark areas and they all kind of look the same. So always have a scratch piece of paper. Yeah, that one is black. That is definitely black. And I am definitely going to have to fix the exposure on that in a bit. Okay. So we'll use that and I'm going to... This brush looks good. This one is a number six. This is just around. This one I think is one that came as a set with other things. This might be the one that comes with the um, Faber-Castell Graph, uh, water soluble graphite pencils. So I'm gonna use that and I'll just wet that just like I would, actually it's this one here. I don't know if you can see how I'm loading that. It's just, uh, here we go. I'm just adding water and mixing that with a brush onto that. And so now it's like a watercolor, a watercolor that happens to be ink. But I'm gonna go ahead and outline everything on this one. Now would I always outline things? No, not if I'm going with something more realistic, but in this case, it is not. We're cartoony, so we can have these heavy lines. This is really hard to do with keeping my thumb straight. I don't recommend bidding on this until the end to make sure I, I, I can fix anything that didn't come out right. I'm sure I can, but still. Now, none of these lines, like you can see how I've got these hot spots where some are, are a bit darker, it doesn't look great. It, I'm gonna go over all of this. None of this matters. What I'm doing is blocking this in so I can easily see where everything is going to go once I get my splatters in. And I do this a lot though, and now not necessarily lining it with black, but I do this a lot when I work with ink tints where I will line in some of my darker values first and then paint everything around it. This is a more extreme version because we are going with that cartoony look, but let's see. Okay. 
Remember, the harder you push, the thicker your line will be. Now, I'm not trying to get this to be a super dark black. Now, here's another tip. With ink tents, uh, the black ink tense block when you paint it on like this is never going to be quite as dark as the ink tense pencils will be. When I go over this with my ink tense pencils, that's what's going to make it super dark. Which is a good thing these lines don't need to be super clean right now because you wouldn't believe how hard this is to do with a straight thumb or semi-straight. I told you I was going to whine about it all night. Okay, so there we go. We've got everything outlined. I'm going to rinse that brush. Now I am using distilled water because there is all kinds of crap in our tap water, chlorine, chloramines, and all kinds of other minerals and crap that, fluoride, um, that not only do I not want to drink, but I definitely don't want it on my artwork. So one of the things that I've seen people complain about with certain water media, whether it be water-soluble graphite, graphite tints had a lot of complaints about that, that it faded even when not exposed to light. Well, that's not a light fast issue. I think in most cases they're using tap water and it's a tap water like they're just not playing right, nice with that. Distilled water all the way, you don't have to worry about it. I missed a whole row here of little lines. Now, normally, if I'm going to do something really realistic with ink tents, I usually will use a water-soluble graphite to, look, to draw everything out so that my graphite lines don't show through. But in a case like this where I want heavy lines everywhere, I just used a regular graphite pencil. There is lightning happening outside I'm just now seeing. If we lose power, I'm just calling it for the night. I'm not even going to try to come back. We'll just do another zombie snail next week when my thumb is working. So if I cut out out of nowhere <laughs> from lightning, I'm just like, I'm just going to take it as, as a sign of enough's enough. Okay, so now that is dry enough, and I'm going to go ahead and start with splattering. Now, I want to use a larger brush than normal, and whenever I want to get paint to splatter, I like something that's fairly stiff. So I'm not going to use a watercolor brush. Those are just going to, like, you try to splatter, and it just flops over. And when I use ink tints, I can use brushes I use for acrylic, and can use brushes I use for watercolor. Any of those are going to work. Now, people will often ask, can I share my oil and acrylic painting brushes? And I say no to that because water and oil don't mix. Watercolor and ink tints? I share those brushes, no problem. Watercolor, or uh, ink tents and my acrylics. If the, I want one of the brushes from acrylics, like this one here, share those, no problem. Um, with watercolor, I don't typically use as stiff of brushes. With ink tents, I typically will go with stuff a little bit more stiff than, than watercolor likes. So uh, that's why I can get away with using some of the acrylic, like this. So, and then of course I'm gonna splatter, so that's part of it. So let's start, I need to pick the purple first. I think this purple looks like it'll be okay, but I need to test it. So as always, I'm gonna take my paper there. Let's see how that color is. That looks me. That might be good. What about this one? This one I think is too. No, that's too much. Let's see if I've got an in between. There's so many colors to choose from, so I can try a few of these till I get the perfect color. Or the one that. No, that one's too blue. I don't want that much blue. That is black. And then we've got the burgundies. We've got some more purple over here. Let's try this one. I think it's more burgundy. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the first one I chose. I think this one is going to work the best. So I'm going to actually flip this around. And I'm just using the bigger palettes. The smaller ones don't always have these, but I'm using the big um, palette, the palette thing that it comes with. And you can just wipe that out with water. Like here, it's kind of muddy. There's a lot of color in there. So I'm just going to take a paper towel, get a little bit of water, and wipe one of these sections out. I don't need it perfectly clean, it's just that if there was a lot of black, 
and there might have been in that case. I want to go ahead and remove some of that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras because I know I'm going to forget once I get started. Now I'm going to actually mix the color with this brush, but mix it in with water, make my little batch of this, but I'm going to then load it onto the other brush because the other brush is too big and bulky. So I've just got water. You can see I'm going to scrape that in there. Again, loading that, just scraping it in there. Actually, I lied. I am going to pull this up so you can see a bit better. And then fingers crossed, I remember to switch cameras. And I just keep dipping it back in my water and working that back and forth. And then wiping that into there. I want to get a decent amount. Now I am going to be splattering this right over the snail as well. I'm not going to be focusing it there, but I actually want some of these splatters to show through because it's going to create a bit more texture when I start painting everything over. So I'm okay with this showing up a little bit in the pumpkins. It just gives me the little bit of texture. So I'm going to dip my brush. I'm going to get a little bit of water on there. Go ahead and load that with my ink tents. Normally I would use a palette knife, but I could not find one. So I'm just going to use the back of any paintbrush and we're going to splatter. I'm going to get some more of the magenta. Actually, I'll probably make it go a little bit faster by, let me dry this. I want some of the, the more magenta color mixed in. Now you can see why I did the black first because I would have lost all of these lines if I would have um, if I would have started with just the splatters. And I had that purpley color I liked. I think was it this one? It was one of them I liked. I'm gonna. This is gonna make a mess. I may regret this, but I want to try to speed it up. I'm using the big brush to try to mix some of this in, and more water this time. So with the ink tents, if I want it to be lighter, I just need more water. If I want, um, if you add white, you're just gonna get pink. So that is not what I'm going for here. So that is a lot of water. This is better if you do it flat, but I'm upright at an easel, so we're just, actually, I can make this spread a little bit. Oops, I'm gonna throw some stuff on the floor first. Okay, hold on, I have to go retrieve what I knocked on the floor. I'm gonna take a spray bottle, and the spray bottle also has, uh, the Find Mist sprayer has distilled water as well. Oh my gosh, this is way back here. So I'm gonna get the paper wet so that these droplets spread out a little bit better this time. I don't want it soaking, soaking wet, just a little. There we go. So that's going to let these be lighter and spread a little bit better. I'm going to get a little bit more water on that brush. I'm not even going to load it with more um, ink. This is going to be lighter. So there's a lot of water there where I'm getting that to be darker or not darker, but more solid. I'm gonna let that run a little bit by adding more water. And actually, I can lighten that. By taking the paper towel over it. There we go. That gives me more of the look I'm going for. Um, I need to fix, let me dry this and I need to fix this because you can't really see the violet anymore. Hold on one second. And my hair dryer unplugged. I am just on a roll tonight. This is a night for me. Okay, hold on. Oof. I am too old to be climbing down under the easel. There we go.
Now, I didn't want to, while I fixed the camera, I didn't want to let that just sit and dry on its own because the paper, is, it buckles and it would dry kind of buckled. It'll pull back into shape and extent to an extent by being taped down, but it's still going to be pretty warped. By taking a hairdryer to it, it's back completely flat. Now, let me take a moment here now that we've got some color. And I think. Nope, that went way too dark. Auto is not going to work. Too dark. That's kind of... The color saturation is bad. The white balance is bad. Everything is just... There we go. Let's get that a little bit better. In order... It does not want to show the yeah that's too much the magenta isn't showing without being and then auto exposure didn't work now huh okay that's actually a little bit closer kind of i'm gonna have to show you in the other camera This is just not, maybe once we start in with this snail, it'll look better. Like that just makes the paper look all dirty and dark. That is weird. We're just gonna go with it for now. It's, yeah, it is not. Oh wait, maybe the saturation, tone that down a little. Kinda, I don't know. We're just gonna go with it. I'll show you right now what that was like on this one, so you can get an idea color wise, is very different than what that is showing. So we have the actual magentas and purples um, for the splatters. Now I want to get a bit of teal in there. And let's pull that back up. Yeah, that just looks dirty now. Whatever. It's, it, it's a night. I'm not, I, I, I hit a point. I don't care. I mean, I sort of care. I'm going to pretend I don't care. Okay, let's get some teal. So first I have to find a teal. I just want a little bit. Um, maybe you? Let's find out. Where's my sample paper? Yep, that'll do it. So I'm going to do this one. I need to clean out one of these little sections again in the palette. Good enough. And I'm going to do the same thing. Let's load that up with a bunch of water. Oops, that is not the brush I was, whatever. Okay, and I'm going to do, actually do the same thing. I'm going to get it wet so that it's not too crazy. Yeah, that's still a little bit more bold than I want, so I'm going to thin that with a bit more water. There we go. Just want that hint, a little bit of the teal in there. Okay, now I'm going to dry that. I'm going to have to do something about that camera. Now those bigger blotches, if you look at my samples, the blotches of paint are thicker and bigger. And the way that I would typically get that, I would want to lay that flat. I'm not laying it flat. If I do big blotches like that, it's going to kind of spread everywhere and run in order to get that look. But if you want that look, layers flat and you can do bigger drops instead of just little splatters like what I've done. Um, it's just that when I photoshopped this, when I did the digital painting, that was easier. So anyway, okay. I am going to, I'm okay with there. I want there to be some texture in here, but I'm going to come through with some white over most of this, just not the shell. The shell can stay that, that bold, but the snail himself and the pumpkins, I'm going to go over that with white first. White is going to be more opaque and it's going to make it so that my oranges and such stand out a lot better. Kind of. 
So let's start, I've got white over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's load that with water. I can actually just pull this over here. So I'm just gonna load that. And when it goes on, it goes on extremely translucent. It dries opaque, which kind of messes with your head as you're working with it because it feels like it's not showing up. It will. Again, I'm okay with there being spots through. If I didn't want spots, my alternative could have been, like if I wanted to protect the snail, I could have used uh, masking fluid and masked him out. But I wanna keep some of that texture. So see how it just looks like a muddy um, purple? It won't when it's dry. Again, just loading that. I just keep dipping the brush in more water. Now you can use colored pencil over ink tents. It just doesn't stick that well. I actually like ink tents pencils over it better. If I want to use colored pencils over something, watercolor is amazing for color like a mixed media. And I'm okay with there being a purple tint. I just don't want it to be quite as textured. I want lighter texture, more subtle. Put a little bit more on here. Now, if you use the ink tense pencils, the white, once you add water, it goes really translucent. It doesn't really make it opaque like the blocks do. I'm gonna dry that. Okay, I'm gonna get a shadow, a little bit of a purpley shadow underneath the snail. So I'm just gonna take the same colors I used for the splatters and go right under there. This, mine is more magenta than what that screen is showing by a long shot. So I'll have to mess with the lighting again. I'm gonna rinse that brush and just with water, smudge that a little bit. Now here's a huge difference between ink tents and watercolor. With watercolor, I can pretty much indefinitely keep smudging that down. With ink tents, once it starts to set, it does not smudge, it doesn't reactivate like that. I'm gonna darken up right in here now. Now notice here, now we're nice and white. So you, when, when I was painting that, I bet you didn't believe it was really gonna get that solid just from one layer. I could put more layers of white if I wanted even more. But see how we, I can see a little bit of the texture showing through? That's good. That is what I want. So that it looks like I've got all this extra detail, which I really didn't. It's just that background showing through. Let me see if I can make this any better though. That, ugh, it's so annoying. I wish I could run two of the razor cameras. Let me see, uh, easel. Yeah, that just looks dirty. That is weird. I can't 
quite, like if I go too warm, it's not giving me the, the pinks at all. I apologize for that. Yeah, mine is way, way more magenta um, than this is showing almost a bluish purple. Um, there's some bluish purple, but yeah, that's just, unfortunately, maybe a little bit, I can bump it up. Oh, that kind of helped. My hands can really gonna be way too saturated, but whatever. Um, that's closer. I'll save it for now. I don't know why it's having this many problems with the color tonight. I wouldn't have thought this would anger it as much as some of the other colors I use. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with, I'm gonna put just the, a base of the purple, being that I already have it out. We've got this magenta color and some purple. I'm just gonna mix in those two together. And I'm going to wash that over the entire shell. See what I mean by I wasn't really worried about my lines not being perfect earlier, why that didn't matter? Thank goodness. And again, that texture, that's totally fine for this. Darken that up a bit more. I'm gonna take some of that purple right around part of the eyes. And I'm gonna dry that because that is starting to buckle like crazy. Good, and my tape is coming off. This is just a night of magic. We're gonna go with that. It's Halloween themed magic. Or inconveniences, whatever. Okay, um, now I'm gonna do a, I need a, like a brownish, grayish tone. Let me test some colors. So I'm gonna take my handy little paper and let's see what we've got over here. I'm just getting base layers on everything. I'll do this shading. It's kind of too red. Maybe, let's see what color you are. Hmm, what color are you? Better. Something between these and maybe black and white. I think I'm gonna actually mix white in with it to get that grayish tone. So let's go ahead. And I can't tell you what color these are, colors these are because I have no idea. I just kind of test them on my paper until I get something that I'm like, yeah, sure. Good enough. Didn't I have black somewhere? Where did that go? I lost it. I think, is it this one? No, is it this one? Yes. Come on over black. So I'm mixing black, I'm mixing this brownish tone and some white, and this is gonna give me this grayish color. Yeah, this should work. There we go, that is gonna be my base color for the snail. That's gonna dry a little bit different because I've got white mixed in with it and anytime you have white, it gets lighter. So we'll see what that looks like when dry. I mean, it looks good now, but we will see. Okay, and while that's set, actually, no, I learned my lesson, paper buckles and the camera froze. I will fix that in a second, let me dry this. Pretty good. I'm gonna need to darken the edge though. It did lighten a lot having the white mixed in. This is so, like every time I work in ink tents, like even though tonight has been like, in the big scheme of things, not that big of a deal, but it's like all these little things keep going wrong tonight and it's just still so much fun. Beat you to it, Nick. Um, okay, so let's grab some orange. Like there's just something about ink tents that is so enjoyable. And that's why, like, you guys know how picky I am about things being light fast. 
it is worth it to me to work in these. I just have so much fun every time. It's fast. The colors just make me happy. Great for sketchbooks. And if like what I normally do is just sell or uh, make prints. So it's not like I can't make any money off artwork that I do with ink tents. go and I can pull some of that brown I did earlier from the zombie snail actually let's just mix a darker color now we are almost ready for the pencils um, over here I've got black again and I don't even remember which colors something over here this one What I'm doing is mixing a, br I want a brownish gray color. So anytime you want a color that has a gray tone, you know right off the bat you're going to need black and white. And then you just add in some of the color, the whatever the ish color was. So like brownish gray, I need more, I just add the browns in. Let's get a little bit more water there. Okay, I think I'm gonna do all the shading really with the pencils from here. Let's dry that. Let's get started now with the pencil. So I'm gonna put my blocks away. Now, I can use blocks again later if I need to, but uh, let's get all these cleanly put away. Don't leave, like if you look at this, see how I've got water in there? Don't leave any of your blocks sitting in the water. It'll make them dissolve. I'm actually gonna soak a bunch of that up. Back in there. I'm just gonna move these down. And we will focus on the pencils for a bit. That is a horrible noise. After I get some tea. Okay. I'm going to need a pencil sharpener. And let's start with really any of the darker blacks. Now, one of the things you wanna keep in mind, these colors, like when you work with colored pencil, let's say I want a light teal. I can use a light teal color. Actually, there is kind of an exception with this. The blue one is fairly light, kinda. But for the most part, most of these colors, when you add them, it just makes wherever you added it darker. It doesn't really go lighter. If I need lighter, I add white, and then the color over it, it works better. Um, like the thick ink tense blocks, those will lighten things, and it gives you a really cool effect. I'm not sure on this size if I'll end up using that tonight or that technique, but with the Inktense pencils, it really just makes things darker. So be aware of that. Um, if you think you, like you look at like the pinks and such, and it, it's not gonna come out looking pink on that. It's gonna come out looking dark burgundy. It's only pink if you add enough water, but that when you're going over other colors just doesn't work uh, um, like this. So this is gonna be the same thing as typically when working with watercolor where you work from your lighter colors and then darken as you go, that's gonna give you more control in the colors that you end up with. Here, because I've already got darks, anything I add on top is just gonna be darker. Where is my white? That is going to be an issue. You know, I remember using it recently and putting that white pencil somewhere stupid and thinking, I'm gonna lose that, and I did. Okay, let me see, I should have more somewhere. I am in luck. I found it, like, quickly. Given the night I've had, I'm kind of surprised. Also, I found more ink tense blocks I didn't, couldn't find last time I was looking for them. Okay, the night is looking up.
If you've got any questions, leave those now. I'll be answering them at the end of the live stream. If I can get the tape off this, just because it's annoying to sharpen when the tape is, you can see the stick. No, you can't see it because the camera froze again. My God, why? Why is this happening tonight? Easel, deactivate, activate. I have no idea why some, like I didn't change anything on the computer. I have no idea why some days that happens. Anyway, what I was trying to show you, the sticker is what I'm sitting here trying to pick off because when I go to sharpen this, that gets gunked up in your sharpener. Oh, come on. Well, I may have to deal with gunked up sharpener because that doesn't want to come off. Because why would it tonight? Lord, okay. What was I doing? We've got highlights, I need black, I need dark purple, and I need something that's kind of a tealy color. You look good, you look good. I need some purples. I'm just gonna grab a few pencils and keep them over at the easel. Let's test these on here. Nope. Yes. You are perfect. Okay, and maybe an orange or yellow. So many pretties. Okay, come on over here, pencils. And I had the white that I've already lost. Nope, because it's sitting right there. Okay, so let's start, and I never found black. What happened to black? These I can tell you the colors I'm using because they actually are marked. So we've got ink black. Now anywhere where you add the, the ink tents, like this is all blended out. So this isn't really going to reactivate much at all. You might get some minor color smudging, but it's pretty minor. These with the pencils, when you've added your color and you blend it, like blend it all out with your water, let it dry, even though they're marked as permanent, they will reactivate when you put water on it because there's no way you're ever, when you apply the pencil or the block directly to the paper, there's no way you're gonna blend out all those little chunks. So that is a huge reason that happens. Uh, do you have to use distilled water with acrylics too? No, I, I use tap water with those. Acrylics are plastic. They are like really sturdy. They, it take, I, I've not found a good way to, to damage acrylics besides overheating them. So no, you're good there. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning this guy's lines up. Oh, so much nicer and cleaner. And I'm pushing pretty hard here because I want these to be nice and smooth and dark lines. My thumb is not hurting as much, so I'm able to actually draw a little bit better than when I first started the stream. So yay to that. Mostly yay to less whining. going over everything we already had. And see, that will get you to completely black. The pencil or the block, when you're painting it on, it's always gonna be a little bit um, lighter. <laughs> Did somebody say wine? Yeah, tonight might be a good night for that. A little late once the live stream's over though for me. Okay. Where is, here we go, pencil sharpener. This one gonna fit? No, that one's too thin. Where's, there's my good one. So I just use these little metal comb sharpeners. And I'm going to even darken these with black too. I'm gonna to go over some of this with the magentas, but just keeping with that cartoony dark outline.
Um, go lay down, cow. Wade, lay down. Uh-uh. Get. Lay down. I don't know what you think you're doing, but we're not going to just start making up your own rules. You know the rules. Lay down. He's like, you can't snap your fingers well because it hurts. That's why I can get up and do what I want. Um, baddest cow. I don't know why. Oh, you know what? I bet you he hears lightning. Like, I can't really hear it, but I can see the lightning. So I bet he's hearing it. That's probably making him nervous. Poor bad cow. Okay. Now let's start doing some of the shading. So let's see which purple I want to go with. I think you will look pretty. You're a, this one's more violet. I know it's not going to look violet for you guys. And it's up to you whether or not you want to use water to blend something out. If you like how it looks with the, just the pencil by itself, you absolutely can leave it like that. The pencil is going to completely change how that looks. So I always recommend test that on another piece of paper before you add water. And you can use, I don't have one over here, water brushes. Derwent makes the best water brushes. Theirs are my favorite, but I don't think I have any. Oh, I do. And it has no water in it. So we're not going to mess with that. I will just use the brush uh, and dip it in water. See how it completely looks different. So this is why you want to test it and know what it's going to look like on the paper first. Remember that black is in there. So if I touch that, it's going to smudge out a bit. Ooh, that water is coming down hard out there. Oh, I'm not even, let's scooch you over so you can see. That is pouring. It has not rained in Texas hardly at all in like a year. So this is kind of nice. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Inktense and water-soluble graphite, the graphite aqua we're all from Fabric House Cell, these are two mediums that every time I use it, I just find myself with the stupidest grin on my face the whole time. Like, it's so much fun. Okay, we need to sharpen you. I don't know what it is. I mean, I like all my mediums I work in, but there's something about these that is just, maybe because I don't do them often enough. Let's go ahead and build it some little shading in here. And this color is fuchsia. I'm going to pull that other magenta color through as well. See how we're going in around the cracks of the, the um, pumpkin? I'm going to take that more purpley color. This one is thistle. Focusing more on the deeper crack there. Okay. Now, same thing, I'm going to use a little bit of water. I'm going to start, actually, I take it back. I'm going to add some orange so that this blends into right up against the purples. See what I mean by how fast this is? Like with all the drama I had tonight, like everything going wrong. Look, at I'm almost like we're nearing the end here. So this just has water on it and focusing on the center. And then I'll push it towards the, cent the, the cracks. Remember, the cracks have black, so I've got to rinse the water off that brush. Start in the center and then push it to the, the black area. You don't want to keep working back and forth over both or you're going to pull that black over the orange and get more mud than you might want. 
And every time I'm just dabbing it in water before I go on to the next area if I've gotten near the black. I'm just lifting some of that here. Same thing, dipping it in water because I got too close to the black. And I say too close, I did it on purpose, but I know that every time I get close to the black, I'm lifting it onto the brush. See how dark that is, which is great. I like how it looks, but I need to clean the brush when I switch back to the lighter oranges. You've got to be careful when you, you're using blacks up against orange because they will start mixing into a hot mess. Lifting some of that. Again, rinse the brush, dab it on my paper towel, start with the center orange and then push it out to the dark areas. Again, rinse the brush, dab it on the paper towel, start in the center orange and work my way, push it to the dark areas. Just gonna pull that shadow out. I'm just gonna let the wet paint there or ink spread out into the shadow. Okay, we're gonna dry that. I need a brownish tone because I forgot to fill these guys in. So let's just get a solid area there. And blend that with the water. Whoops, that is running. Way too much water. is a lot of lightning which is slightly concerning for live streaming time okay let's go ahead and start shading the shell same thing I'm gonna use the same purples let's darken these edges can you guys hear that thunder oh my gosh bad cow is being really good for how scared he is of thunder you know what actually I'm gonna give them a bonus do you guys want a free super chat for Thunder? Because I feel bad for you and you're being a very good cow. Thunder means treats. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Sorry for the pause, but Thunder's very scary for a cow. Okay, go lay down. Lay down. Go on. Lay down. Both of you. Down. 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 Gibson. All the way. I poke at him to go and he looks back, like glances back, like don't touch me. Lay down, Cal, lay down, 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 down. Not in the bed with, oh God, that's not gonna end well. Yeah, Gibson just growled at you, lay down. Gibson, down, I know he tried to take your bed. Oh my gosh, I, I, I wouldn't have done it if I knew it was gonna turn into that drama. Good boys. Okay, back to work. So see how I'm shading the edges of the little shapes on the shell? Same, same thing we just did with the pumpkins, basically shading the cracks. And here with the shell, if I go too dark anywhere when I'm blending it out, I don't care. And I don't even care if the black smudges out because the black with purple looks fine. I can come back through with my white pencil and get my highlights back in as needed. Okay, now we'll grab some water. Just smudging that out a bit. Okay. 
can see how I'm not bothering to rinse in between because it doesn't matter if the black smudges with any of that purple. You just have to be careful when you're dealing with blacks and oranges. Oh, we had, <laughs> you know what? This is a good time. We've got Sylvia Anderson sent another super chat treat. Let me dry this. Oh, and oh, we've got a couple treats. You boys are gonna get it now. So you boys have a super chat from Sylvia who said a treat from me too. And then we also have another one from Rob who said, I cannot have a scared bad cow. <laughs> He's already over here. As soon as I said that, wrong camera. As soon as I said that, cow was like on his feet. Okay. You get two treats right now. So here's your first treat. Was very good. I shouldn't give them two in a row like this though because they're gonna start, next time I give them one treat, they're gonna be looking at me like, well, one time we got two because suddenly we can count. There you go. Good boys. Say thank you. Didn't want to have a scared bad cow, huh? Yeah, because thunder's scary. I've been trying to teach, and it works really well. I do the same thing with uh, um, fireworks because cow is super afraid of them. Gibson kind of was. Gibson's not afraid at all anymore. But every time they hear it, they learn to run to me and they get a treat. So that's worked out really well. He used to be terrified. Like before, if he'd heard thunder, he would try. I don't know if you remember on old um, live streams, like from a couple of years ago, he would try to force himself under my easel. I'd have to go put him in his crate so he wouldn't hurt himself trying to shove him his very large butt into things he doesn't fit into. Go lay down. You're done. Lay down. 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 He rarely does that, though, where he tries to get under something to hide. So giving treats is help. No, lay down. Gibson, down. Gibson. He's just standing there staring at me like, but I, I could just ignore you instead. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Uh, what were we doing? So we just blended a shell. We dried a shell. I can come through with some highlights just a little bit with the white. I'm just lightly going to go over that. The white Inktense pencil is weird. It is the one color I almost never blend out with. Wow, that has no color saturation, what you guys can see. Um, it's so much prettier in person. But it is the one color that I don't usually blend with water. You blend it with water, it disappears, and it doesn't really come back. Like the white Inktense block, you thin it with water, you paint it, it goes on translucent, but it dries opaque. This one, once you add water, I feel like, I don't know if I'm just not getting it on as heavy, but it never really seems that, like it just, it just disappears. A few highlights in here. Now let's shade our zombie snail. He needs kind of a grayish brown. Let me see if I can find something. You are being a very good cow. That was a pretty good thunder and you stayed down. I am impressed with you right now, sir. Okay, I don't know if any of these are gonna be what I'm looking for, actually. Take it back, the first pencil I picked up, that looks perfect. This is dark chocolate. Oh, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna do a little bit of shading around the edges here. And you may have to pull a little bit of purple into that as well. Let's see how it looks when I add water. It's pretty brown. Don't think it's gonna need purple. Maybe black to gray it up. It actually has a nice purple tint to it. Remember my lesson about always testing your colors first? Yeah, I didn't test it first here, but it worked out. rinsing that brush where I want to just use water to let that blend out here. Okay, and let's dry that.
can't, I'm going to need to come back through with the black. See how it lightens anywhere where I went over? We lost that line, so we'll just take the black right over it, darken that up. And then let's get some highlights. I'm just doing little circles, making it a little blotchy. Okay, let's take, oh wait, let me need some more black. Let's clean that up here. And next, I don't know how this teal, I don't think that's going to be light enough. Oh, the lighter blue actually was standing out better. Yeah, that's not going to work. So the teal that I want on here, I'm going to actually have to mix with the Inktense blocks and paint or do it with colored pencil. Let's see if the colored, if I can get a colored pencil to stick, that's going to be the easiest way. But if it doesn't, then I need to paint it on, which is turning out to be a challenge with my gimpy thumb. And this looks like a nice color. Let's see if this shows. Wait, that might be too dark. I can't even see what that says. Something green. Um, maybe not you. Wait, you look lighter. This one, maybe. So I'm looking through my Caran d'Ache luminance because those are typically going to be more opaque. Oh, this is a nice one. One of these two colors should work if it sticks. It depends on how much I have on there. Because I splattered this, I don't know how well it's going to stick. It might stick better because it's not thickly painted on. But when you've got thick ink tents, colored pencil does not, it kind of sticks, but not super well. As far as being archival, I mean, it's fine there. But let's see. Oh, perfect. Okay, so this is actually working well. This is light malachite green. Yay. Oh, and I didn't put the black first here. You're being the best cow right now because that was a pretty good thunder and you didn't get up. Where'd my black go? I lost my black. Where did I put that? Because I need it and I've lost it. Like, there's not that much stuff on my easel. How am I losing stuff? You are it. Okay, so let's go ahead and line that with the teal. That's showing up really well. Yay. Even if it is angering my poor thumb. It's much more vivid in person. I'll show you on the other camera in a moment here. I'm just going, I'm mostly staying on the outside of the black. pushing really hard to get this to show up well. Now, anywhere where I've put the colored pencil, I do not want to put the ink tents on top. Ink tents is water based. Now you're not archival. Actually, just in case on a couple of these areas, I'm probably going to need more black. I'm going to use it with a regular black colored pencil so I don't have to worry about mixing those two. Yeah, let me grab a black pencil really quick. I think I'll go with the polychromos, just because I can get it sharper. Although, yeah, I don't know which one I, whichever one I find first, I think I'll go with. There we go, it is polychromos. So I'm 
just gonna clean up a couple of areas. And the only reason I'm using black here instead of the ink tents is because I've already put the colored pencil with the teal on and depending on where that is, if I layer the ink tents on top of that, I'm running into issues for, with longevity because I'm putting, that's a water-based product. And the colored pencils are not. Shadow out a little bit more. Wow, it, see, and this is what gets me. With all the hiccups I had tonight, he's already done. I mean, mostly. So I can take a couple of minutes and clean up some edges. Get some little zombie line eyes. He's got bags under his circle circle the eyes because you know he's zombie it's a cartoon it doesn't have to make sense oh and we've got to give him his little zombie stitches or scratches or whatever they are. I'm, just, I'm still pushing really hard anywhere where I want this pencil. It's lighter where I'm doing the shading. There we go. And he will come framed if somebody wants a Halloween zombie snail. He will come framed like this, so I need to sign it where it will not get it cut off by that mat. Or not framed, but matted. There we go. Oh, and the camera froze. Lovely. One second, we've also got another treat for the boys. I've got to say it quietly. Let me just undo the easel. This is the worst I've seen it freeze. I don't, I just don't understand why some nights it freezes like this. Nothing changed. There were no, not even updates, nothing. There we go. There is the finished zombie snail. Let me pull him over here so you can see the colors better. So there we go. You can see we've got a lot more with the magentas um, in the purples. If I go closer, it's just gonna go out of focus, so that doesn't really show, but yay, zombie snail. So yeah, I'm super happy with how he came out, especially given the way the night started. And we also have Crafting with Victoria Clark sent a super chat. We've got, did they notice? Wait, no, oh, yep, they noticed. You boys want your super chat? Say thank you, Crafting with Victoria Clark. Oh, oh wrong camera. Okay. See, thunder's not so bad. Look at all the treats you got. It's always funny, Gibson, you don't, Wade, you always see the whites of get Wade's eyes, like just the way his face is shaped. Gibson, you don't see it often, so when he does that with the treats where you, the upper side of the, the whites are showing, he looks so silly. He's so excited for his treats, like crazy eyes. Was that very good? No one cares. That, that, was, that was too much information, Lisa. Go, go lay down. That's all. Lay down. Go. Look. Oh, oh, I can snap again. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Tonight. Bad cow. Wade, lay down. He's like, but I thought I could just be spoiled and do what I want because thunder. Okay, so we'll go through questions. Um, let's see. Again, if you want to bid on this zombie snail, if you like Halloween decor like me, if not, I'm going to keep him for my own Halloween decor. And actually, the way I would do that, so he will come to you matted. So you'll be, you're looking at this. The starting bid, I think I only have it at $50. So he'll come matted like that. You'll just pop him into an eight by 10 frame. You want a behind glass, ideally UV protecting glass, because again, not light fast. I mean, some of these are, but I don't know which ones are and which ones aren't. But what I would personally do for Halloween stuff like that, I like to get a cute Halloween ribbon and use hot glue gun and glue that to the frame. So it's like when I hang it on the wall, it just looks more like decor, like a decoration for the holidays, which is fun. So anyway.
there you go. Let's see. So let's go through your questions now. Whoops, that is not. Okay, come on. Show me what I'm trying to look at. There we go. Um, let's see. Noctis said, I just recently got the ink tents. I love having your artwork on the tins. They're so fun to work in. I like the layering capabilities. Oh yeah, they are, they're just fun. Like I said earlier, like every time I work in them, I'm not having my best night ever. I mean, my poor burned thumb. Um, and just stupid little stuff, dropping stuff. It, it's just been one of those nights, stupid things, nothing major, but it doesn't matter. I'm over here with this stupid grin on my face because they're just so fun to work in. Like the, this kind of goes to what I've been talking about a lot lately too. I've been talk, mentioning like in the email newsletter and stuff, working in art does so much for your mental health. It doesn't matter if I'm painting a cute cartoon, if you're coloring in a coloring book, like it can do so much to lift your spirits. So my night, again, minor stuff, nothing major. My finger wanted to make me, how can something so small hurt so bad? But I'm still over here having a blast because I'm working in ink tents and it's just fun. Like I am in such a good mood considering an hour before I started, I'm like grumbling and I hurt and I can't find any burn cream. And so I'm cutting pieces off out like everything. Everything was just like annoying me because you know, it hurt because I'm a big baby. But I sit here and paint and I'm like in this totally happy, good mood because it was so much fun. Like the, the act of creating releases so much, many endorphins and it doesn't have to be art. Art is definitely its own special thing. But like if you crochet, if you just create, you make things, the act of making things will do so much for your mental well-being. So I highly recommend it. Even if it's not something you're super serious about, you're just bummed or you're frustrated or things are just not working right, get a sketchbook out and just go go play. Go have fun with something. Okay, um, let's see. Fly Me to the Moon said, I painted an oil painting that I don't like. Can I just use regular gesso on it to white it out? No, because that's normal gesso is water-based. You put that over oils, not gonna work for you. So no, um, I don't even know if, if they make an oil-based gesso that you could do that with. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know what your alternative there is. I would just paint over it with oils depending on how much you didn't like it, I'll just paint right over it and let some of the previous painting show through just a little bit. It gives you unintentional detail. Like that little bit showing through while you're trying to cover it, but it doesn't cover completely, kind of gives it a cool effect. That's what I would do. Uh, Melissa said, question, I have trouble with getting a smooth wash with ink tense blocks. It's very streaky. I have to do multiple layers to get it smooth out. One hundred percent cotton paper, any suggestions? Yes. Get yourself a fine mist sprayer, mist it with water first and keep it wet the entire time you're working on blending that area. Because as soon as it starts to set, as soon as it starts to dry even a little bit, you're gonna get streaks. But you have to keep it completely wet and this little device, fine mist sprayer, I don't know if I have it in the video description. I have it on all my other video, anything I've painted with acrylics, my dart frogs are going crazy. Um, but anything that I've painted in acrylics, you'll have the link to this in the that video description. Keep it wet. You can use a regular hair, like or a regular spray bottle. The problem is the water droplets are heavier, so it's a little bit harder to control what happens. But yeah, that is what's happening. As soon as it starts to dry, like watercolor will completely blend out. You just keep adding water and you'll blend out in your streaks. Ink tense does not do that because it's it's permanent when it's dry. So permanent, but it kind of smudges a little, but not really. But anyway, um, yeah, keep it wet. That'll that'll fix your problem. Or like you said, you're gonna do, even with that, I still have to do multiple layers when I need something really smooth. Um, DC Miller said, thank you for the wonderful videos. I do have a question. Have you ever used ink tents with your airbrush? If not ink tents, do you use ink in your airbrush or only paint? Yes, I actually have a video. It should be here on YouTube where I did a, a red panda and it's a surreal scene, I believe. There was an earth in succulents remembering correctly, but I did airbrush the background. Now here's what I found. It get, oh, why did that happen? It gave me a really weird, like it didn't, it took a lot of layers and then taking the hair dryer to dry in between because the ink tense doesn't dry right away. I had to thin it with a lot of water to get it run nicely through the airbrush, but then it didn't dry right away. So I'm like the paper was buckling and then it would kind of beat up because it, the, I was building too much. And so I'd have to dry it and then put another layer and dry it and do another layer. So it worked. 
but it was kind of a pain in the butt. Normally, I just, like Golden's Airbrush Paint is my favorite, that's like my go-to. But for Intense, Intense did work, but it was a really weird experience. It it just took a lot of layers to really get it right because as I layered, like I normally would, like Airbrush Paint, it dries almost instantly. So I can layer a lot before I need to take a hair dryer to it. But with the Intense, I found that like a light layer dry it, a light layer dry it because it would build up weird. But it did work. And it did not clog the airbrush like airbrush paint can. So that was an, an added bonus. Um, Aline said, why does the looting a medium reduce its light fastness? Is it the same across the board between mediums? It doesn't necessarily. Um, we didn't know with Intense. So we contacted Derwent, like, like several artists had contacted them. When I say we, it's, I'm not actually making that up. But Derwent didn't know for certain if adding water reduced it. But the more I've thought about that, I'm like, it shouldn't. It shouldn't make any difference to the pigment. So I don't think that it does as long as you're using distilled water. Um, so if they're saying that it is a light fast, like it's an eight, it's completely light fast, I don't think adding water is gonna make any difference. It just lightens it. But the pigment shouldn't be affected by adding water. The binders shouldn't be what's making anything because it's the pigment that makes it light fast, as far as my understanding goes, not the binder making that big of a difference. So. I don't think that adding water is going to cause any issues. I've not seen it cause any issues at all. Um, but yeah, Derwent didn't specifically test like what the light fast was once water was added, but in theory, like that shouldn't make a difference as long as the pigment itself that was used was light fast. Python said, do you have any, or do you have to use, okay, wait, I answered that one earlier. Uh, Moonram said, what brushes do you use with ink tents? I use a combination of like Taquan bristled filberts, Taquan, this one is a Taquan bristled round brush that came, this, I, I wanna say this came with my Faber-Castell uh, graphite aquarelle, like it's just a wonderful pencil or pencil brush. It's a synthetic, um, so it, my brain just completely shut down. Taquan bristle, um, and it's a, just a round number six. So that one is pretty much what I used for everything tonight, but any of my watercolor brushes work fine. I also use a lot, like that one is a Taclon bristle. That's typically what I'm gonna use for my acrylics. So most of the brushes I use for acrylics work okay with uh, Inktense too. Um, Jason said, after the Inktense is laid down on the paper and water added, colored pencil doesn't go into the raised part of the paper or is it the raised part of the paper that is flattened? It has nothing to do with any of that. I think it's just like the buildup when the, the intense is on thick, for whatever reason, it's just not, the, the pen, colored pencils don't grip very well to it, not like it does with, with watercolor. And I think it's that the intense is a little bit thicker when I paint with it anyway. I tend to put it on pretty thick. So I think that that's why. It's just, there's no grip to, for the pencil, nothing for it to stick to or it doesn't stick real well anyway. Um, like when I work with watercolor, I don't feel that it leaves as thick of a, I don't wanna say residue, because it's not a residue, like it's not as thick. So maybe that's, I don't know. Um, do you know what the best manual sharpener, do you know what the best manual sharpener works on Faber-Castell watercolor pencils? Hexagon barrel is the thickest. None of my current electric sharpeners have a large enough opening. I don't know. I just use these little coom sharpeners. It's got, oh, this side, um, wrong camera. It's got the two little holes. This is what I use for mine. I don't use any of the mechanical uh, electric ones myself. So that I can't help on. Clark Feiner said, do you have any of the Inktense pans or do you feel they would be irrelevant given you have the blocks? I think they're irrelevant. Um, they don't, some of the new Inktense products that come out honestly don't make sense to me. Like the extra large blo blocks, why? And even like they came out with a new hundred set of ink tense blocks. Again, why? They're, like there's so many colors. If you look at the set, this is the set. Like this isn't even the set that has my art on it. This is the old set. This was the only set of ink tense I've ever opened. And I have a few sets of these. Um, look at these colors. How much I have of all, and all of them are like that. The only ones that I really go through, white and black I go through. There's a few colors that I use more, but the majority of these colors, like you don't, a little bit goes a long way and there's so many colors. That's just one pan of it. Like then we have these ones. Again, so many colors. I can't imagine a situation where I want more, a bigger variety of colors. 
there's so much with this is the 72 and i love more colors of everything colored pencils heck yes give me more colors always give me more colors with colored pencils with the blocks especially because of the way that these blend and mix i've never had a moment where i was like oh there's just not the i can't get the color i want so i kind of am like i never got those um i didn't even and i could probably contact the company and have it well i don't know the new people that run it are questionable but the people who had been running like and dealing with their the like social media influencers or whatever you want to call us youtubers um they used to they would have sent it to which is weird they don't talk to any of us um, old folks that used to, to like be, I used to be a, uh, what was I? A Derwent ambassador. I don't think I am anymore. They don't talk to me anymore. They used to keep in touch and like, oh, are you, do you need anything? Do you want to try this product? Do you want to try that product? I haven't heard from them in forever. So like they used to have me test colored pencils before they went to market. Like some of them they would test and get your opinion on and stuff. It was really cool. I really liked how involved they kept artists and I don't even know who the people are right now. They've changed the way stuff is. It's got, it, I don't, I have no idea what's going on with them but um even knowing there's a possibility i could just have them send me the set of 100 i don't i'm like why they why i don't need more colors that it makes no sense to me but it, at least not for how i work now if i was taking the block itself and really drawing on the art a whole lot that i might feel a little different but i don't work that way so i've just not really seen any reason for it so yeah they've got a few products where did i go off on that tangent for oh yeah the pans the pans i did have the travel set that was really cool i loved that it was just like going in i went and sat out by a stream and drew I think I just drew the trees and stuff of the stream and ran out of water and the stream was too far down for me to get to to get more water that was fun but anyway also a little like oh it's right there but I'll probably break my neck if I could go down to get it but anyway um no that I really liked the travel set set or the travel kit but yeah the pans and stuff I'm like I just this is fine I don't know maybe I would change my mind if I used them but I know that the extra large blocks people are like oh this is so cool why I mean, it's kind of like with kids, you give the toddlers the big crayons because it's easier for them to hold, but why would you give that to, like, a, as an artist, I don't see where there's any benefit in that. Uh, Delvin Soul said, did I miss the story behind what started your zombie snails? I don't even remember what started that. There, I, I wanted to do something cute, zombies, I like snails, I like zombies, and I don't know... I don't even know. Like, I know what the original one was. I just don't remember what the reason, like, where it really came from beyond that. So, yeah, I don't know. I, we, a couple of years ago when I used to do, like, I took a year off from live streaming, but before, like, every time there was a holiday, I have a, somewhere it's around here still, like a zombie snail Easter one where he's wearing bunny ears and... I think he was wearing bunny ears and there's like eggs or something like I've got a Valentine's Day. What was it Valentine's Day where he's got an umbrella with little hearts on it and he's holding that set and it's raining. So, I mean, yeah, I've got I've got them for all the holidays. Um, let's see. Were there any other questions? Where 923. My God, we finished early. That way, it was way earlier than I expected. I thought it was going to take me longer with my gimpy thumb. Um, let's see. And Dolphin Salt said, all of Derwin's marketing seems to be for England, not U.S. It didn't used to be, though. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what their marketing people, like, I don't know if they hired people that don't realize how beneficial it is to have, like, YouTubers share their products. Um, I share it anyway. I use it. I love ink tent stuff. But I don't know why. Like, I have heard stories of artists that they we're working with and the, my experience with Derwent was so positive they are so good about paying the artists like they paid me for the tins and I'm like I would have done that for free I just wanted my art on the tins I thought I mean that's like artist's dream to be on a package the packaging of something but um like they were amazing they've ever I did a uh, years ago, they flew me out to Utah, to Salt Lake City for a big art convention thing. They had me demonstrate ink tents at their booth. Like they're in just the way they treated me the whole time. Like I have nothing but good to say about them. Now it was them and McPherson's that I was working with. So maybe it's McPherson's is more who now owns Frederick's, which is awesome. Cause I'm like, if Frederick's had to sell to somebody, I love Mc, McPherson. So that was, that was happy news for me. But anyway, um, the like everybody involved with the Derwent side of things, the McPherson side, like have nothing but good to say about everybody. But yeah, I don't know what happened. None of those people are there anymore, not on the McPherson side, but on the Derwent side. And so I don't, everything changed and artists that I knew that worked with them for some stuff 
had some stories that I was like, wow, that would make me not want to work with them on stuff in the future. Like that was, and it's not, I don't want to make it sound like Derwent as a whole is bad. It's these individuals they had working for them didn't know how to deal with their artists, I think is really what it boils down to. Um, Because I don't want to like bad mouth Derwent. I love Derwent, like I love the company, but I think right now they have people who are working, whoever they have communicating with artists or who had been working with, like they're, they're currently questionable. They, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. Fly me to the moon said, may I see that beautiful flamingo again? Um, what is McPherson's? Jason asked. McPherson's, they're like an art distributor. They work with several art companies. I don't know. I don't know the details beyond that. Um, let's see the flamingo. I do have that. Which one was the, I think this was the flamingo. I still have this. I need to frame it because this would look beautiful with the pink colors. I have pink and teals are my colors in my, for my bedroom. That would look so pretty in there. I have a lot of flamingos in there. I should frame this and hang it because I absolutely love everything about this. Bees and flamingos, like it's my favorite things. So, uh, or two of them anyway. Um, yeah, that was with ink. And this was one of my first, like, I'm going to really try to do something good with ink tents. And already, like, the, it's just a, a very easy medium um, to work with. So that is one of the ink tense ones. Um, okay. And that's on my website. You can head over to, to my gallery. It's over in my gallery if you want to look at it. Uh, Python said, should I invest in the more expensive Windsor & Newton artist oils or should I just use the Gamblin artist colors, which I, is what I already use. I like Gamblin. I don't have any complaints about Gamblin. Um, wait, you said oils, right? Let me double read that again. Uh, oils. Yeah, Gamblin is fine. Um, I didn't realize they were, I thought they were about the same. At least the ones I bought, I thought were about the same as my Windsor Newton, or my, uh, yeah, my Windsor Newton ones. Um, yeah, Gamblin's fine. I don't, I have not had any problems with theirs. So if those are working for you, go for it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and I don't, I, I, that's what I'm saying. Elaine said it's such a sad state of affairs when companies have bad apples working within the company. I don't know what building relationships are. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm careful. Like, I don't want to say too much because I like Derwent. Like, I like the company. I love their products. Love their products. I just think that whoever they currently have in charge is not focused on what they previously were or, like, yeah, it just kind of, it, it's just kind of weird. I don't know. Um, but I mean, like Derwent as a whole, I, I've loved the people who I worked with in the past were amazing. So uh, who knows? Um, Alice said, would you redraw one of your old art, something from eight, seven or eight years ago? Well, I actually did one that was from older. It would have been from 1994, 1995. I did, I redid that painting. Um, it was an orca scene, like underwater marine life one. I redid that. So that one was a big gap. That was from a few years back. Um, anything from seven or eight years ago isn't going to look that different. I don't think that I would want to. I don't think that like you know, you go through a, a stage, like let's say when I was 18, you go from when I was, what I was creating when I was 18 and what I was creating when I was 38, there's a huge difference or even 10 years from that. There's going to be a huge jump in my skill level. And right now, if I went back seven or eight years, I don't think it's that different. Like it, it really isn't going to be like a night and day. Oh my God, what a difference. I can't believe that was the same artist. That's really not what's going to happen. The only thing that might be fun is let me take something that I did before but change it. How can I take it and get cr more creative on the idea I previously did? Now that might be a fun take. That I like. Now, yeah, now that I'm thinking more about it, I think that could be fun. Take something. How can I take this and make it different? Make it more creative. What could I do? Make better lighting on it. I've got some ideas now. Thank you. Okay, I need to you can bring that up again in the future because you know it's going to be forever before I get to it, but that could take a while. Now, Clark Fine Art said, I love Derwent products. Me too, except for Colorsoft. That's the only one that I'm like, no, no to Colorsoft. Aline said, this is for the boys doing so well and your thumb zombie sale curse is almost over. Hang in there. Okay, boys. Thank you, Aline. Oh, bad cow's not waiting. Gibson, you want your super chat? You're such a good boy for waiting. Gibson is much better behaved than Wade. Wade's like, I do what I want because I'm the bad cow. Bad cows do what bad cows want. Oh, we're almost out. I need to get some more this weekend. No, Gibson, that's not yours. Good boy. Oh, my tea is way too close. It's good. No one drooled on it. 
Thank you, Aline. Was that very tasty? So you, you're getting thunder, thunder treats? Yes, that's very good, huh? Oh, yes. Okay, go lay down. Lay down. Go on, all the way. I'll keep on going. I've, been, I, I've gained the power to snap my fingers again, Gibson. See, look, and it didn't even hurt. Lay down, Gibson. They're, they're like, nah, I don't really want to. All the way, Gibson. Butt down. All the, there, oh, look, you can do it. It's a miracle. Um, let's see. Oh, I think oh, we have a text, is that? Oh, you lost me. Why did you lose me? I don't see that I'm lost. Or was that an old one? That could have been an old text that I didn't open. Camera froze, we lost you. No, I'm here. Weird. Refresh. I've not lost you. Okay, Clark Feinhardt says we have not lost you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, Nick. Someone tell Nick to refresh. Um, okay, we had some more questions come in. Oh, that rain is really coming down. Oh, yeah, it was Nick. Nick's got us panicked for nothing. Um, let's see. Python said, there was a, this tube of Michael Harding cobalt blue, cobalt blue oil paint that was $200 Canadian. The prices of some art supplies make me jump. Oh, yeah. Some of the oils. Oh, my gosh. There are some colors that I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. I can mix whatever. I, like, I am not paying. And even on cheaper paints, like, you can get Windsor & Newton, which isn't super expensive. Some of those colors are just insane. That's why I, there have been a few times, I'll go through and I'm like, okay, I want the best colored pencils. I want the best whatever, the best watercolor. I can't afford the best, the best oil paints. I'm like, it's light fast. It's good enough for me. Um, it's archival, so it's fine. But yeah, some of these are just, I cannot believe the, pre like oil paints can get really expensive, like insanely so. And I've never used any that were expensive. So I know I take that back. There was one brand they sent me, was it Ho old Holland, Holland something? And they were nice and I could have this wrong. So feel free to correct me if I do. But they were nice, but really expensive. Like it was a, a sample they sent me. They were really mushy, like a little bit of paint did not go that far. When I use my Windsor & Newton, a little bit of paint goes a long way because I thin it with my mixing medium. With this, it, it didn't need to be thinned as much, but it, and it, it was nice, but not nice enough to pay those prices. Oh my God. I, I was just like, yeah, this is beyond anything I can afford. So yeah. Oh, zombie snail got a home. Somebody's going to get zombie snail. Can I see who bought it? I can't see. Um, yay, zombie snail. Okay. What am I doing next? I was pulling up. Here we go. Let's see, Art of Raven D said, I thought about drawing a musician I drew as a teen recently for a comparison, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> I, I understand that. Because sometimes it's like, I just don't want to do the same thing over again. Like, I've had people say, can you do the same subject, but in a different medium? And it's like, or the same reference, but on a different medium. And I'm like, I mean, I, I just don't hate myself that much. Sometimes, sometimes I may be masochistic, masochistic enough to do something like that to myself, but dear God, I hate painting the same thing over and over again. Story time. We did a thing, my church, years ago back in California. They did a thing where it, they had a group of artists do a big four foot by two foot painting like live during the, the, the sermon. And the, or the, yeah, that's not the word I'm looking for though. It was like a whole thing for the music, for the whole day, whatever. And I did many, 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 many of them, like more than most of the artists. But what I didn't know, they did a thing where they wanted to keep all of the, the two by four, and then they went and bought canvases and they gave us the opportunity, which was really cool, but they gave us the opportunity. People could bid on the paintings to have it repainted. Some of those paintings I painted like two or three times. Like, and it was, I just, it was great because that was how I bought my first laptop. So I'm super, was gr so grateful for the opportunity, but also it was like, these are big two foot by four foot. And it wasn't that they were that complicated, but it took, a, it was a lot of work. And there were multiples of the same, I, God, I must've done like 
eight, nine, 12, 13. No, I think I did like 13 or 14 of them. Like it was a lot. It was a lot, a lot that I had to do total and doing the same ones again and again, because that's what people had wanted. I was so grateful because I got to get my laptop, but also I was like, I never want to paint the same thing twice again, ever. Um, let's see. Uh, where was I? Baby Panda said, hi, hello. Uh, sort of art related, how did you do your pretty nails? Thank you. So I do um, stamping plates. They're these little metal plates. If you look up, like look on Instagram, clear jelly stampers, you'll see examples of, of how this is done. But they're, they don't really, I don't think you're gonna see, I think it's gonna get blurry if I go close to this camera because the way I have it set. Yeah, you can't really see. And then this camera is terrible. So you're really, nope, wrong camera. Let's see, can you kind of see? It's blurry because this camera is terrible, but they're little ghosts. They're actually super cute, but this camera is not being amazing. But it's three stamps. So you've got a stamp, I stamped the white base, then I stamped the little high, or well, they're really shadows here, and then the, the black outline. So three stamps per little ghost. So it's really fun and addicting. And I've been collecting nail stamping plates for years and years and years, like, 15 years, I don't know, a long time. So I have a million of them. So it's kind of fun because I'll see something on Instagram that inspires me and I'm like, I've got a plate that's gonna look almost just like that. Uh, let's see. But clear jelly stampers are my favorite stamps by a long shot. They have the double and the triple stamps. Some stamps you can just stamp once and you've got your design, but these ones you get more details. Like this is a three stamp. So you get three different details of color. That's fun. Um, and you don't have to like actually sit there and paint your nails like little details. Let's see, Alice said, do you recommend mixing oil paint and keeping it in the freezer? No, I've just never seen the point of any of that. I watched a tutorial where the artist would mix a color he knew he needed for a lot of it for a big project and keeps it in the freezer. How long, okay, how long is he taking to finish the painting? Because if I mix a cut one, I never need, because of the way that I paint and my work looks really realistic, there is never gonna be a time I need that exact color and it has to be perfect or it's not gonna be right. I put out a, uh, my palette. Let's say I know I need phthalo blue, phthalo green, white, black, red oxide. Like I've got a specific amount of colors. I'm going to be able to mix what it was from that so close that when you get into the painting, because everything's mixed, everything's blending. When, you, when you're working in realism, you don't need the exact, exact, exact color. Uh, and everything is very translucent. So you may think, well, what if I need that color because I've got this solid color background and what if I mess it up? Okay, all of the paint are gonna be somewhat translucent. So when you put another layer on top of it, it's not going to look the same. It doesn't matter that it was the same color because of the translucency. This one is a little bit thicker where you did your touch up. It still doesn't matter. I see no benefit. I know of artists who do that and I think that they're making their life more difficult than it needs to be. I just don't see the reason for it. You just quickly mix it as you're going. You know these are the colors you have out. Plus, everything that I mix except for like a thin layer of mi mixture, like if it's a thick little pot of uh, like I mixed a good amount, it's gonna stay wet like for friggin' weeks. I could probably oil open my oil paint. I have not painted in oils. When was the last one? A couple of months ago. It's still gonna be wet in there. Like I don't understand why, what, I'm not taking up room in my freezer for something, it is so unnecessary. Like, did you water your bowl of water? It's water, why would I put more water? You don't water water. And I feel like the, the freezing of paint, I'm like, I just don't get it. And maybe there's a reason I'm not seeing, but I'm like, every time I hear people talk about that, I'm like, now, also, I should be a little bit more fair. I'm using a palette that seals it off like Tupperware. I'm sealing that air out. So that's part of why mine stays wet so long. So maybe that's it. Maybe I just answered the question. They need a better palette and then they don't have to take up room in their freezer. I don't have any room in my freezer for that. I'm busy storing crap I'm never gonna eat. So, okay. I actually did clean that out the other night. There was some stuff that expired two years ago. Um, let's see. Python said, I saw a short video where the one of the filler, one of the filler clips was, a, oh, okay, I'm not reading that right. One of the filler clips was them squeezing out a Winton oil color. They seem so thick. Are they really that thick or is it just a them problem? They are that thick. No, that they are that thick. So Windsor and Newton Winton color is insanely thick. That's the cheapest one. Really, really thick. The Windsor Newton Artist Color is what I personally buy now. Now, that being said, I still have plenty of Winton Color and I'm not tossing it. If I need that color, I'm gonna use that color. It's thick, I have to thin it with a lot of mixing medium. So yes, that was definitely not a them problem. That is just how Windsor and Newton and that's the cheaper paints, the cheaper oil paints. The more expensive paints seem to be much, much softer, a little bit easier to work with straight out of the tube. 
I'm just, I'm so, I've been painting with the, the Winsor Newton Artist Colors for so, well, heck, it started with Winsor Newton Winton Color. So I was so used to the thick, chunky, like, oh my gosh, this is too thick. I, I just thin it with my mixing medium. So I don't even think about it because I'm so used to working that way. I understand why the softer paint is more desirable, but also it's not like, you can work with the harder stuff. Yeah, it, it is that thick, but I just thin it with my liquid, no problems. No, that's it, I don't buy, how many times have I said that said? Um, it makes me feel fancy. I don't still buy Winton Color, like at all. I'm just using up what I have that'll last me the rest of my life. But when I get new colors, I go with the Winton Color Gamblin and, uh, no, Grumbacher and Winsor Newton Winton, no, Winsor and Newton Artist Colors are the two that I usually buy. I really like the gamble, uh, my brain just shut down again. What is it? Am I getting those backwards? Hold on, which one? Is, it's the G one. Um, Gr Grumbacher, that's the other one that I really like. Grumbacher and Winsor & Newton Artist are the two that I buy because the price is, you know, it's in my price range and they're softer than Winsor & Newton Winton colors of, yeah, it, that, that stuff is thick. That stuff is like a rock. Um, Dolphin Soul said, have you ever created animal skeleton creations? I did once. Um, somebody, somebody, my, my sister used to really like, and actually she still does this. When she wants to impress somebody, she thinks having me paint something for them is a gift from her. Yeah, no, that's a gift from me. Um, so my sister has always done that. Um, yeah, the Grumbacher, or I'm, I keep saying Grumbacher, yeah, that is, Grumbacher pre-tested, that is the one. Um, but yeah, my sister has done that so many times. But one of the, before I learned, just ignore her when she texts you, um, about wanting, she only texts me when she wants me to do something like that. But um, every time she was dating someone new, so many of her ex-boyfriends have paintings from me. So I, it took a while for me to figure out what was happening there. But anyway, the, yeah, one of them, he wanted a skeleton of a pelican. And I don't have photos or anything. I mean, maybe on a floppy disk somewhere, like it's that old. So how do you read a floppy disk now? But yeah, I don't have photos or anything, but they were, yes, I did that. That was kind of fun, but also it was hard because I didn't really have good reference photos. I, I was kind of making it up from a few different things for the angle that he wanted. I don't know, it was weird. It was weird and fun, and I probably won't do it anytime in the near future. Um, Sabrina Keller said, what is better for beginners, watercolor, acrylic, or oil? Sorry, newbie here. You don't have to apologize for that. I only color in coloring books. So watercolor, I would say, is by far the most difficult medium to learn. Next, acrylics. Oils are the easiest. And I know that is probably not what you're expecting. So let me break that down a little bit further. If I'm teaching somebody and I'm working with somebody in person, it is so easy to teach someone oils because you're not fighting the dry time. The problem with oils, and I've got plenty of videos walking you through how to do this, so if you follow those videos, it's just like me having be, being there with you explaining like when to mix the, the mixing medium in there. But the, because um, I have a beginner painting, it's like, I think it was the apple of oils that will help you. And that's the free one on YouTube too. We'll, we'll give you that. That should have some good tips for you. But the you have to know when to stop and let it dry with oils. As long as you, as soon as it starts getting muddy, because that's the problem people have, they overblend stuff and then they create mud. Let it dry, and if you're using a fast drying medium like I do, I use liquid overnight, it's dry enough to start painting again the next day. The problem people have with oils is they keep wanting to paint. They're like, I've got eight hours to paint, I or whatever, I'm just gonna keep painting the whole eight hours. Okay, no, you can't do that with oils. You're gonna hit a point where that just needs to stop, that layer needs to dry before you can layer on top, otherwise you're just going to start creating mud. Acrylics are my favorite medium. They are one of the more difficult to master. Very few people, I mean, in the in the grand scheme of thing, I think things. I think you have a lot more good artists with certain other mediums than acrylics. Like, there's not as many people who have truly mastered acrylics and gotten good at it. Um, not good enough that I would be like, yeah, I'd be proud to call my work that. Like considering, can, comparing to other mediums. Acrylics dry fast. So you're always fighting that dry time. Now, I show you how to do some tricks. This, I have a video, the one with the raccoon, I'm, I show you all kinds of tips. But there are tricks you can do with acrylics to keep it wet long enough to dry. Now, if you're doing that, you get good at that and fight, you know, beating the dry time of the acrylics. Acrylics aren't, dip, none of them are dip, no, watercolor's hard. Watercolor's just the hardest. Um, watercolor ha has so many things you have to be aware of and be careful with to not make a muddy mess. 
But yeah, I would put them in order of like, as long as you're following a lesson and not just diving in on your own and like, what happens when I throw things at the canvas? Um, I think oils are the easiest, then acrylics, then watercolor in that oil, that oil, that order. Python said, project suggestion, realistic still life in oils. Absolutely no pressure though. I have the, well, it's just the apple. Yeah, possibly. Actually, we have an oil painting lesson that's going to be coming up. I'm working on a hawk, a digital painting of a hawk. I'm going to finish that guy up within the next couple of days, and then I'm going to jump right into, I believe it was an owl oil painting was the plan. So I may go big. I don't know how big I'm going to go on that. I kind of want to, I want to do some more like big projects, which take forever, I know, but I, they're just, I, I do a lot of the little ones, the little fast ones. So I've been wanting to mix in more of these big, more elaborate, like just more impressive, exciting type things. So yeah, that is coming very soon. I mean, it's not a still life. The fence part is kind of a still life. It's still, and it's not life. Um, but yeah, that's coming that as soon as, soon as I finish the current digital painting. Let's see. Yeah. And, um, Sabrina Keller said, I'm surprised, oh my, I'm su surprised that oil's the easy. So everyone is. Anytime somebody came to my class when I used to teach in person and they were looking for the easiest oils and they always thought that was so weird. And here's the other crazy part. The cost for me to get someone started in oils is very similar to the cost to get them started in acrylics. There's not a huge difference because it's, you know, your canvas costs the same. Your brushes are going to cost about the same, at least when I'm getting someone started. Like everything, it's not that I'm using the same palette for both mediums. Um, so that cost is the same. And with the oils, if you're starting with like the Winsor & Newton uh, Winton colors, again, those are not your best oils, but as long as you're getting the light fast ones, yeah, you got to thin them with more mi mixing medium, but they're fine. The Winsor & Newton artist color, certainly, are better, but like if you're on a budget when I'm getting someone started, they're fine. Um, so yeah, it's not even like it's more expensive really to start with oils than acrylics either. So I would say whichever one interests you more that you look at and you're like, that's just something about that excites me, something about that I want to do that. If you want to not have to worry about rushing for dry time, because that's the part that frustrates a lot of people when they're getting started with acrylics, you can get the hang of it, but it, that's the part that's frustrating. Oils are, I think, more relaxing in that. Now, the downside with oils, do you have, well, see, I don't even paint in the same room with acrylics if I have a bird, but like if you've got birds, I don't want to paint in the same room with my birds, really with most mediums because the fumes, the oils are, can be so strong. So I don't, they don't bother me. I don't have any problems. Um, the, the supplies that I use, I don't, I'm prone to headaches and even the, the paint thinner that I use doesn't cause any issues. However, there are paint thinners and turpentines and even, ooh, that was a big lightning, um, like all natural. If it says all natural for paint thinner or whatever, avoid it. It's terrible. All natural does not mean non-toxic and it does not mean it's not going to make your head want to explode or your airways try to close up, which is what happened to me when I used one of those um, all natural lavender uh, paint thinners. Just my regular Mona Lisa Odor Odorless or the Gamsol is by Gambar. Those are my, my, either of those will work for your paint thinners. And the smell is not that strong. It just smells good. I love the smell of the oil paints that I use and the mixing medium and everything. It's just a nice, happy smell. It's not too strong, but I also don't want it around my birds. My, my dogs are fine. I'm fine. Bearded dragons in the room. I mean, I open the windows and the doors and stuff to let it air out, but that is something that I'm just aware of. A little bit more ventilation going on when I work with oils and when I work with acrylics. But as long as you're using like common sense precaution, like I put the lid on the, the paint thinner when I'm not using it. I actually don't paint with paint thinner. I just use it to clean my brushes. I use mixing medium for thinning my paint. Um, it's, you're, you're fine with just using common sense. But again, birds are very, very sensitive. I've got dart frogs in here. Now, frogs are going to be your indicator species. They are very sensitive to different changes in the environment. They've never been phased. They breed like crazy, like never been a problem with them. So again, I'm not worried about anybody but the birds because of the way their air sacs are and they're very sensitive to um, fumes and things like that. Birds are just different when it comes to that. So I'm more worried about my oils with birds than I am with my acrylics. So, and I have birds, I just don't bring them in this room. I really never bring them in here. So it's not an issue, but yeah, those are just a few things to be aware of. But like I said, bearded dragons in here, frogs are in here, not an issue at all. I'm prone to headaches, not an issue for me. Never gotten a headache from my oils, except when I've tried those all natural ones. Um, I mean, there are a lot of, there are a lot of things in this world. Palithoa toxins. 
are natural and they're one of the deadliest chemicals in the world. So those are from, if you look up polythoatoxin, it's, it's a coral that I keep in my fish tank. So, you know, you have to use some precautions, but um, that's all natural too is the point. Uh, let's see, and I still need to be careful with them. Do I have an opinion about water mixable oils? I hate them, absolutely hate them. Now, there are artists who use them and do amazing work with them and love them and swear by them and that's awesome for them. I personally don't like them. I like my regular oils. I like the smell of my regular oils. I like the texture. I like everything about my regular oils better than water mixable. When I bought the water mixable, it didn't, I didn't like how it was with the water. I just used them like I do my normal oils until I ran out of, like I was done with that color. So I would just mix them with my normal uh, paint thinner or not paint thinner. Uh, well, yeah, that too, but my mixing medium. So it's just not my, it's not my thing. Um, but like I said, there are plenty of art. God, how many times do I keep doing that? Like I said, um, there are tons of artists who love them. I'm not saying that you can't produce the most amazing work with them. It's up to you. It's just not for me. Python said, I'm almost done binging the cuttlefish and damselfish painting. The canvas is literally massive. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. I need to finish that. I've got to record the video for it, like the actual thing to put on YouTube. I'm working on that. Uh, Python said, was that lavender stuff called oil of spike lavender? That's the kind of thinner Da Vinci allegedly used. I'm not sure what it was called. It was something that came in one of my smart art boxes years ago, like... God, that must have been back. It would have been before 2015. So, I mean, it was, oh, two, I, I'm guessing somewhere between 2012, 2015, right around there. It's been a while, so I, I don't know what it is. It got thrown out. My, my palette where I had used it, that palette stunk for like six months or longer. Like even though I had cleaned it all out, I couldn't get the smell to go away. It was so horrible. And like my throat was like, I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I don't usually react that strongly to things. I'm not that sensitive. I mean, I'm prone to, prone to headaches with certain smells and certain things, but yeah, that one, I couldn't breathe. Like you could feel it like in my chest, like down here is where it was closing up. It was, that was a little scary. And it smelled horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the birds are super sensitive. Like the, the painting with tuna, that's one of the reasons I haven't finished. Um, why is there something that, let's see why we have a notice of, oh, it was Matt walking out the front door. Uh, I'm like, why is someone at the ring camera? I've been watching too much 48 hours and cold cases and stuff. So I'm like, there's someone at my door. I'm going to get murdered. Um, but yeah, I'm being ridiculous and paranoid because I keep watching scary things because I don't make wise choices. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, about the birds being sensitive, I, the painting that was one of the reasons I didn't want to, I'll talk about that in the, the main video, but I didn't want to do oils on the tuna painting the, with the cuttlefish and such because uh, that's going in my office and that's not a huge, that's like the smallest room in the house and tuna, my canary is in there. So most sensitive animal I own in with an oil painting. So that painting has been drying for months before, like varnished and drying for months before I'm ready to like. Put, it's now I'm, I'm comfortable hanging it and really it was probably safe a week later but I'm so paranoid because I love my canary so much I'm like I just waited forever before I was ready to like so yeah it hasn't even been hung yet okay let's see we've got eight seven more minutes um if you guys had any Question, we can, Python said, I'm more concerned with corrosive toilet cleaner than with my Gamsol, although I'm still extremely cautious with that massive one liter thing of Gamsol. Exactly. Yeah, there are so many things that we use. I just burp because I'm a classy lady. There are so many things um, in our like everyday life that is so toxic. I am way more concerned about them than my oils. I mean, you just use common sense with stuff. Uh, people, I think, get way more worked up over it than necessary as long as you're using common sense. I've also seen some major face palm stories where people are doing things like, if you ever watched the videos where Bob Ross has his paint thinner in a bucket and he's sitting there and we're going to whack this brush and he, this paint thinner is just, he's, it's going into the air. You are going to be breathing that in. And that is the exact thing you do not want to do with any sort of paint thinner at all. Ever. I don't care if it's listed as non-toxic or not. You don't want that getting into your lungs. Like that is terrifying to me watching that it's just like knowing how bad that is is like oh god oh god you're gonna die oh you did so y that is very scary to watch some of the things that people do with these supplies where you're just like you can't be that dumb you just can't be that dumb. sorry bob ross but you now know that was dumb right but um 
yeah, that's, you, you just, you've got to use some common sense. I know some don't use that portion of their brain, but yeah. Well, common sense will keep you safe. Um, let's see. Sullivan Soul said, I don't mean to be ignorant, but could you frame that oil painting to tone down the smell or do you never frame oil paintings? No, you want them open. So you do an open frame. You don't want to put glass over an oil or acrylic. You're, the, the theory there is that they are supposed to be able to breathe. Now, I know people who put them behind glass and they're fine, but yeah, you're supposed to have them able to breathe, like from the front and the back. Like even if you put paper on the back, usually a framer will cut little um, corners out so air gets through the paper. Uh, Python said the only red and yellows I use are cadmiums. No concern. I'm not eating them, so I don't care that much. Yeah, again, common sense. That little part of the brain that is very lacking these days, though. So I understand where some people are scared of it because they are missing. If you don't have the common sense gene, then yeah, stay away from all the scary stuff. But yeah. Um, let's see. Baby pandas, I hate when my ring goes off and I check and see a big he uh, or bug walking across the camera. Scary, they look huge, yeah, on those. And when it's in the, the nighttime like mode, yeah, that definitely. Uh, Marta Brimondi said, I stopped using cadmiums a long time ago and heck, I gotta do some extra uh, securing in my room. We got new kittens and they, they're they easily making their way up this level at the home. Oh, babies. Um, Nick said, not just the paint thinner, but the, atomi uh, the atomized paint probably wasn't the healthiest thing to inhale. Yeah, there was just, some of the dangerous stuff you see people do, I mean, even like, so I talked about polyphyla toxins. Um, zoas, it's a type of coral. Uh, zoas are, are really the, the polyphyllas are the, the worst, but they're all kind of, they're kind of related. Um, that is one of the most toxic things in the world. And some geniuses thought, I've got these pallies growing on my rock. They're kind of ugly. I don't really want them anymore. I'm gonna put this rock on the stove in boiling water and boil them to kill them. His whole family and all his animals ended up in the hospital. I think, did that one die or did he live? Like a few people have died from doing stupid stuff like this with their fish tanks. And you're just like, oh, you completely lack the common sense gene. Like these are not, I don't, why would you think that was a good idea? We know this is dangerous. Um, now there are people who have, have gotten injuries that are, are kind of like, there was one freak, no, lay down bad cow, down, down, down down. Thank you. Um, there are people who like they had, uh, they forgot that like this one guy crushed his finger in the fridge door earlier that day and he forgot that he had wounds. And so he put his hands, he was messing with his zoas and he got a cut and he got blood, like it got into his bloodstream. He got super sick. He was hospitalized and almost didn't make it. Like, I mean, there are a few freak accidents where you're like, you just didn't think but it wasn't like the full, let's boil this in a pot and kill my whole house um, and pets. So the, the, yeah, you can have some accidents that are just like freak accidents. Like one guy got squirted by the Zoe in the eye and his eye, like he went blind. So there are definitely some things that can just straight out accidents, but a lot of it, like I wear gloves to, especially if handling Zoas because I'm super paranoid. So my gloves, I have these big orange gloves that like, they're way too big for me, but that's just what I use in my fish tank. That's what I've always used to, to keep that safe. So yeah, I, I, I'm la listing that under my common sense things to do because I do have a lot of Zoas. But yeah, anyway. Um, let's see. Alice said, I use fix it for graphite outside of the house. I feel the furniture absorbs the smell, so I spray it outside. Yeah, a lot of fixative. So like Spectre Fix, I spray indoors. I don't worry about that. My brush and pencil, the fixative for that, I will use that inside, no problem. But the final spray, that's outside. That stuff smells strong, like the brush and pencil one. Any like final fixative, like matte varnish, anything like that, that all gets used outside. That stuff gets, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, as though as a type of coral. It's really pretty. It almost looks like a little flower. They're beautiful. I have lots of them, lots of them in my tanks. So you just, you're gonna be cautious. And I don't have any that are like the known, this one's over the top deadly. They're all a risk. We don't know for certain which ones are and which ones, well, we know some for sure are issues or have a lot of polythelotoxin, but not all of them do. So um, mine, I just treat them like they all do use precaution just in case. I try to avoid the ones that we know for sure do have it, but the, some of mine might have it and I don't know it. So just in case, I just use precautions with all of that. Um, let's see. 
Nick said, I went to a med call once where a guy was shocking his pool and decided to dissolve the chlorine in hot water in his bathroom. Oh, God. See, yeah. The, the, there, he was missing that common sense gene. That is just, wow. Um, wow. Anyway, okay, we are at 10 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and go... Yes, we'll give you some hugs and some security hugs. Bad Cow needs hugs. So thank you guys so much for joining. Congratulations to whoever just won the zombie snail. And what else? I don't know what we're doing next week. Leave a comment when the, the video is over. Leave a comment um, telling me what you want to see next week because I don't know have anything chosen. I did find a really cool pumpkin that was like simple and it was just pretty because I had like lavender and orange. It was gorgeous. So that's on my to-do list. But yeah, anyway, I will see you guys next week. Oh, check out our moderators. Their channels are listed in the video description. They have great videos here. We've got, I know Joseph and Clark Fine Art live stream all the time. I don't get notifications for Clark Fine Art. I know Joseph's there every what, Monday, Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. I forget which because I'm a jerk and I don't remember. But yeah, anyway, check out their channels and I will see you guys. Um, next Wednesday. Bye.